from prehistoric amphibians that eventually evolved into modern day whales, to underwater creatures around today that just may be bridging the gap between life underwater and life on land. These are sea creatures that almost did or could eventually evolve into a human-like species. Now, what sea creatures did we actually evolve from? Well, the story of human origins takes us back about 540 million years to a tiny, wriggling sea creature called Saccharitis. This creature was only about a millimeter in size. It lived in the sand on the ocean floor. They had a sack-like body with a large mouth, but no rear end. That means it likely had to do its number twos through its mouth, how far we've come. Saccharitis is considered one of the earliest known ancestors of all deuterostomps, a major group of animals that eventually led to creatures like fish, starfish, and eventually humans like you and me. Even though Saccharitis was very simple, it was the next step in the evolutionary tree. It had this flexible skin and some muscles allowing it to move by wriggling through the sand. It probably ate by sucking in tiny particles or small creatures. Mudskippers are pretty fascinating if you think about how they bridge this gap between aquatic life and life here on land. They're kind of like a cross between a frog and a fish and they've got some cool adaptations that show how life can start to make the leap from water to land. Mudskippers are an amphibious fish that can spend a lot of their time out of the water. They're found in swamps and mud flats and they use their pectoral fins kind of like legs to walk across the mud flats. What's even more interesting is that mudskippers breathe air. They have specialized gills that can retain moisture, which allows them to absorb oxygen from the air. This allows them to live outside the water for long stretches of time. Their ability to move on land and breathe air could suggest that these things are in a sort of intermediate stage in evolution. And it's pretty cool because it kind of gives us a glimpse of what early fish might have gone through as they adapted to living on land, eventually leading to us. Mudskippers also have eyes that are adapted to both underwater and land. They haven't evolved into human-like creatures yet, but they could eventually lead to a new life form way, way down the line. The smooth hand fish. This is or was a species of hand fish found in Australia. It was classified as extinct in 2020, but just a year later that was switched to data deficient. So there may still be a handful out there. These fish were very strange. They had a very unusual way of getting around. Instead of swimming in the traditional sense, it used its pectoral fins like legs to kind of walk along the sea floor. Weird, but pretty cool. They may have been moving across the ocean floor in a similar way to how early vertebrates might have moved on land. The handfish's fins evolved into broad, paddle-like shapes that helped it walk or glide, which is a big step in the direction of a more land-like movement. Unfortunately, these things may be totally extinct, but I mean, who knows what direction they could have gone in evolutionarily. Not that we'd be around to see it anyway. There's a pretty wild but fascinating hypothesis about human evolution. The aquatic ape hypothesis. The idea that some of our early ancestors might have lived in an aquatic environment like swamps or shallow seas instead of just on land. The basic idea is that these early humans adapted to life in water which influenced their development eventually leading to what we are today. One of the main points of this hypothesis is that our ancestors could have spent a lot of time waiting swimming or diving and that this might explain some of our more unique traits compared to other primates. For example, humans have relatively hairless skin, which could have been an adaptation for staying cool, reducing drag in the water, our ability to hold our breath, the fact that we have semi-webbed toes and hands, the way we walk upright could have had something to do with evolving in an environment where we had to move through deeper bodies of water and you know, be upright. All of this could have had something to do with our possible aquatic activities way back in time. Octopuses, I mean, these are some of the most fascinating creatures in the sea. These guys not only look wild, but they're incredibly smart and their intelligence could hint at some amazing possibilities for the very distant future. Octopuses have brains that are surprisingly complex for invertebrates and they've shown some impressive 
problem solving skills. One of the coolest things about octopuses is their ability to use tools. They can uh, open jars, they can mimic other animals, they can create shelters out of like coconut shells. They have a level of brain power that's pretty advanced compared to most other animals. They also have incredible camouflage skills, changing color and texture to blend in with their surroundings. So with their smarts and adaptability, some scientists wonder if octopuses could potentially evolve into more complex forms in the very distant future. If they were to evolve further, who knows what kind of adaptations they might develop. They already have a level of intelligence and problem solving ability that could, in theory, lead to even more advanced capabilities over millions of years, even eventually evolving into a more human-like species similar to our boy Kit Fisto. Of course, this would happen long after we're extinct or have left Earth and evolved into who knows what. The axolotl is one of the coolest amphibians out there. First of all, they're very cute. Some people keep them as pets. I've heard they're not great pets, but anyway, they're famous also for their ability to regenerate lost body parts like limbs, spinal cords, even parts of their heart. They completely regrow these parts without scarring. It's that's like an anime level power right there. And unlike most amphibians that go through a complete metamorphosis from larvae to adult form, axolotls stay in their larval state throughout their entire lives. Now, let's imagine if these things had evolved in a different direction. Their regenerative abilities might have pushed them towards developing even more sophisticated abilities. And who knows, it could in the future. For example, if they continued to live in water but evolved to have more complex limbs, they could end up with hands or forelimbs. If they'd also started spending more time outside the water, their limbs could have become more dexterous over time. They might have developed to handle life on land, becoming creatures with this blend of aquatic and terrestrial traits, maybe even evolving is something with a mix of human-like and aquatic characteristics. The Pachycetus. This was a prehistoric creature that eventually evolved into a much more intelligent, advanced animal. It could have evolved into a creature almost like us, potentially, but it ended up going in a different direction. Whales. These are obviously a highly intelligent animal. They're excellent communicators with high levels of emotional and social intelligence. They obviously live underwater, but their origins can actually be traced to an amphibious creature called the Pachycetus. These things lived around 50 million years ago, and they're one of the earliest known ancestors of modern whales. But my god, you'd never know it looking at one, or a depiction of one. Obviously, they're long gone now, but we do have bones. Pachycetus looked almost like large rats, and probably spent a good chunk of their time on land. But they also had features that eventually evolved into a life completely underwater. For starters, their ear structure uh, was similar to modern whales. Over millions of years, Pachycetus descendants gradually adapted to a more fully aquatic lifestyle. Their bodies became more streamlined. Their limbs evolved into flippers. They transitioned from walking on land to swimming efficiently in the ocean, which eventually led to the beautiful, majestic whales that we have today. Teenage Mutant Ninja Sea Turtles. Sea turtles have been around for over a million years, and their long evolutionary history shows just how adaptable and resilient these guys are. They have a unique body with that protective shell, they're capable of long migrations across the ocean, long limbs adapted for swimming, and a highly developed sense of direction for their migrations. Their ability to navigate long distances shows a very high level of environmental awareness. If sea turtles were to evolve further, their flippers might gradually adapt into more functional limbs capable of holding objects, you know, like katanas or nunchucks. Over time, this could result in a semi-aquatic species with a combination of turtle and human traits. They could even learn martial arts, fight crime, eat pizza instead of algae and seaweed. I should turn this into a cartoon. Dolphins are already some of the most intelligent marine animals. They have complex social behaviors, communication skills, problem-solving abilities. Their high intelligence makes it pretty easy to imagine them evolving into a more human-like form. I mean, dolphins even use tools like marine sponges to protect their snouts while they forage on the seafloor. If dolphins continued to evolve, their intelligence could possibly lead 
to more advanced cognitive functions. Over millions of years, their flippers might evolve to become more versatile. Their social behaviors could get even more complex, maybe even leading to sophisticated forms of communication and perhaps even a culture. All right, mermaids. The idea of mermaids has been around for centuries, with sightings reported by sailors and explorers from different cultures all over the world. These stories often describe mermaids as having a human upper body and a fish-like lower half. Now, some accounts are pretty detailed, claiming that mermaids live in these elaborate underwater cities or have their own unique cultures. From a cryptozoology viewpoint, one theory is that mermaids could actually be a type of undiscovered primate or marine mammal, and not just something in lore and myth. Reports of mermaid sightings are a lot less frequent than they were back in the day, but there are those rare cases where people claim to have spotted some sort of mermaid-like creature, only they're not usually described looking like Ariel. They're said to be much freakier looking than the Disney depiction. Sure, it's most likely that these early sailors mistook a creature like a manatee or a dugong, both of which have kind of like almost human-like features when you see them from a distance and you're just this desperate sailor who hasn't seen a woman in God knows how long. But who knows? I mean, another possibility is that mermaids could be a form of undiscovered species. If creatures like that existed, they'd be living in remote or deep sea environments where it's hard for scientists to fully explore thoroughly. With all that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video. Mm -hmm.